message on a hill far away, on a hill far away. Luke chapter number 23, begin reading with verse, <clears throat> verse number 25. Speaking of the crucifixion of Christ, <clears throat> Luke 23 verse 20, I'm sorry, Luke 23 verse 27. <clears throat> And there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paths which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in, the, in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his, garment, his raiment and ca cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and, and saying, If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. It was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God today. Lord, truly we can leave now, God, having read the story of your death on the cross. And God, we could say it's been good to be at the house of the Lord. But Father, I pray right now, God, that you'd help us around the word of God, that we'd rightly divide the word of truth. God, help us get a good glimpse of Calvary this morning. Father, let us look at you and see exactly what you have done for us. Father, we pray right now, should there be one among us today that does not know you, that's never been saved, let them be as the repentant thief, Lord, and call out to thee before it's eternally too late. Bless us now. Rebuke the devil from us. God, again, plead the blood of Jesus over this service. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. As we begin to think on this, we center most of our attention, rightly so, on the cross of Calvary and of on Jesus. Uh, this cross that Jesus died upon was, a, was a, a cross of cruel, very cruel means of putting someone to death. The Jews mostly stoned people to death. But it was chosen the method of crucifixion for our Lord and Savior. And with Him, two other thieves, two other malefactors were also crucified with Him. And friend, that method of crucifixion is beyond my description this morning of how hard that must have been for men to drag our Savior and as He freely gave His life as they, as they uh, took Him to the cross, as He bore His cross up Calvary, as He who knew no sin became sin for you and I, and as He freely gave His life for you and I to be nailed to that cross in shame and disgrace, oh, what a Savior, what a Lord that He is. And rightly so, we look on that and we worship the Lamb of God and we see Him as He is. And friend, that's what we should think about when we think about the cross of Calvary. 
A friend, his death was a horrible death. But it was a death that he gave. It was a death that uh, his life was not taken from him, but he, he gave his life freely for you and I. And I begin to think there as, as, as uh, we were studying this verse and thinking about these things, Christ had already been beaten beyond recognition. His body was, was broken and bruised. His bones were not, but his body was broken and bruised. And he'd been beaten with a cat of nine tails, 39 stripes. And as he took that and he'd been spit on and he'd been slapped and he'd been uh, all manner of things done to him, this is the Lamb of God, friend. This is God in flesh that I'm describing to you this morning that took such a, such a beating and took such a shame for you and I. And as he was uh, carried around he, uh, there to the cross, he said the Bible told us that he was wounded for our transgression and he was crucified as a common criminal. You remember back when Pilate offered him and said, uh, you know, said, uh, I find no fault in this man. And the crowd cried out, give us Barabbas. Away with Jesus, crucify him. That was the desire of, of uh, the people that day, that Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Messiah, the King of Kings, should be crucified. So we see that on that hill called Calvary, we see that there were three crosses that day. I'll preach to you just a little while. I want you to get this message, and I want you to ponder on the things that I'm talking to you about. Uh, about. First of all, we see that there was a cross of redemption. Jesus paid it all, the song says. All to him I owe. Sin has left its crimson stain, but he washed me white as snow. Jesus paid my sin debt. An innocent lamb had to be slain, and that lamb was the Lord Jesus Christ. All the Old Testament sacrifices, as we've been, uh, as we preached on last Sunday, all those Old Testament sacrifices pointed to the Lord Jesus Christ being the supreme sacrifice to die on the cross for you and I. He was that sacrificial lamb, as John saw in John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God. He was that one, friend, that would that would entirely pay my sin debt. Uh, he didn't just cover my sin debt. He paid my sin debt and took it away and removed it as far as the east is from the west. This was the, the man in the middle. This was the cross of redemption. This was Jesus paying my sin debt. Friend, if it was not for him, I'd be, I'd be either in hell or on my way there in which I would rightly deserve because of my sins. There's people say, well, well, preacher, I'm not that bad. Friend, when I got saved, I wasn't that bad, but I was still lost without God. I got saved at a young age. I hadn't had time to get out into the wickedness of the world, but I was still a lost sinner in need of a Savior. And even though I wasn't real bad, I was lost. And friend, today Jesus died for me. Jesus died for my sins. He died for my sins of the past. He dies for my sins of the present and friend it, when I sin again Jesus died for me and he paid my sin debt oh my friend today what a, what a savior we have in this redemptive cross that we see where Jesus died for you and me oh I can never thank him enough I can never praise him enough I can never give him glory enough because now friend because of his death burial and resurrection I don't have to go to hell amen Ah, the millions today and the untold millions today that walk and don't know the Lord, friend, are one day going to die and go to hell without God. But you're looking at a preacher and I'm looking at a group of folks this morning that because of that redemptive cross, because you put your faith in Him, you no longer have to worry about dying and going to hell without God. Oh, what a Savior. So we see that cross of redemption and we see that man on the cross that died for you and I. We see him as he freely gives his life for, for you and me. They didn't, as we've said many times, you know, they did not kill Christ on the cross. They put him there for execution. But, the, but we study in the Word of God and what, it is, what the meaning of him giving his life is that he freely, by his own will, offered. When he said, it's finished, friend, and he gave up the ghost, he really gave up the ghost. It was, it was his will 
that he give up the ghost and die so he could fully pay my sin debt. Now you you see people, you know, I've heard of people and and uh, people that are executed, they don't go, usually they don't go easily. It's not their will. It's not their will that they be put to death. These two thieves on the cross beside him, it wasn't their will that they be put to death. But it was the will of the Father, and it was the will of the Son, and it was the will of the Spirit of God that this man Jesus would give his life, hallelujah, for somebody a wretch like me. Amen. Did I deserve that? Not at all. Do I deserve it today? Not at all. Do you deserve it? No, friends, you do not. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that's good, friend, but we're all sinners in need of a Savior. And thank God Jesus by His blood provided a payment and a ransom. He paid my sin debt and made a way that I could go to heaven. Undeserving as I am. How many of you, you don't want to raise your hands, but how many of you have ever received a gift that you just didn't feel like you was worthy of having? I have. And I think, oh, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not deserving of this. But I, how little and insignificant that is when we think of a gift of the Lord Jesus Christ that He gave His life for me, and I'm not deserving of it. But thank God I'm glad that one day I took advantage of the free gift that He offered to me. And if you're here, child of God, you too have been bought by the price of the blood of the Lamb. The gift was offered to you of salvation. And by your own free will, you accepted Jesus as your Savior. Now, neither Jesus died of his own free will, but it is by our free will that we accept his plan of salvation. God doesn't force it on anyone. God does not force salvation on any human being. It is presented as a gift for exception or rejection. And with that thought, I bring you to the other two crosses. Remember the cross in the middle. Remember the Savior's cross. Remember the death of the Lamb of God was a cross of redemption. But then we see here as Jesus gave His life, uh, you know, gave His life for you and I, we see a cross of rejection. Verse number 39, And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. We see this man on the cross. He was on a cross of rejection. He would not believe. He would not repent. He would not trust this man that all he wanted was for his own selfish motives, for his own selfish reasons. He didn't want to be on that cross dying. Even though he admitted guilt. You know, I got to think about this also. Barabbas was released. Now, these two fellows may have been friends with Barabbas. Now, they may have been jealous of Barabbas. They may have thought, well, Barabbas got to go free. He was meaner than we are. Why are we on this cross? The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew and the book of, of uh, Mark also that though these two same two thieves railed against Jesus and cast the same in his teeth. But when it comes to the account of Dr. Luke, when he's explaining it all, they still, both of them still, uh, you know, had the, were suffering the same thing. They'd been murderers, they'd been thieves, they'd been robbers, they'd no talents, what all they had done. And they were deserving of their punishment that, as they were hanging on the cross. And as they, their appointed day was the same day that Jesus was appointed to die, and there we see have this one thief that rejects the Lamb of God. It is a cross of rejection. This male factor was an unbeliever. He did not believe in Jesus. He did not believe what Jesus did. But as he hung there and he wanted to come down, he didn't want to die. And to the last breath, friend, he had a desire to live and to go about his business. And if he had have gotten down from there, he'd have been worse off as a thief and worse off as a robber than he was when he was put there to fir- the first place. But there he was. And he says, I'll just, just get us down from here. If you be the, who you say you are, then you'll get us off of this cross. Jesus could have. Jesus could have. It, it, it was within his power that the Bible says he could have called ten legions of angels. Or with the very thought of his own 
mind with the very words of his own own mouth he could have said we're down from here we're finished with this and we'll all go free but he didn't do it and I, I read here where Jesus life was the only thing that these men looked at and the only thing that they believed or not or didn't believe in was his life and it was a perfect life now friend as these two thieves I don't know the conversation that might have been among them beforehand I don't know if there was any but the only conversation we we, that is revealed to us is what the Bible tells us here and a couple more verses of Scripture. And this one was, a, was, was wanted to uh, be off the cross, but he rejected the Lamb of God. His sins were paid for. Jesus was dying for the man's sin that rejected him. And I'll tell you something today, friend. If you're here and you don't know the Lord, guess what? You reject His perfect gift. Because this same Jesus died for you. Freely he gave his life for you. Freely he suffered and paid your sin debt. And if you walk away from God, if you reject him, then you'll wind up being where this thief is. Now these uh, history says and tradition says that these two men had names. And the one that rejected him was the, was, was the one on his left. And it is said that his name was, was Gestus. Now, I don't know if that'd be true, but we'll call him that. Well, Gestus was lost without God. And Gestus rejected God. And he, as he hung on the cross, all again, all his reason was get me off this cross. That I might go free. And he looked at the Lamb of God and died and went to hell on the side of the Savior. Think about that. As Judas kissed the Lamb of God. As he kissed, as it were, the gates of heaven, he died and went to hell. And as this thief on the cross, on his left hand, as this thief on his left hand looked at the Savior, looked at the Lamb of God, he cursed him. He railed against him. He blasphemed him. This is what this is all telling us that he did. He blasphemed him. And he died and went to hell without God. Oh, my friend, that's a terrible rejection. The cross in the middle is a cross of redemption. The cross on the left is a cross of rejection. But friend, the cross on the right side, the cross on the, the right hand of Jesus Christ is a, is a cross of repentance. This man's name by tradition and history says that his name was Demas and he this cross was a cross of repentance the dying thief listen to this the dying thief had faith in the dying Savior hallelujah now he was here and he looked over at the man on the left he says don't you know what you're saying he says but the other answer and rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? He said, Look here, buddy. He said, You're in the same shape. We're all in the same shape here. And you look at me and I look at you and we know each other's past. Well, I know that I'm guilty of why. I know why I'm here. I deserve what I'm getting. I know I broke the law. I know I've done evil. I know that I've been a murderer and a thief and by law I should be hanging here on the cross and you look at me and all you can say is, is, uh, is, is to blaspheme this one in the middle and we look at his life and we've heard about his life. He's never done anything wrong. He's never done anything deserving of this punishment that he's getting. He's done nothing but this and he's done nothing to miss. But we, because of our sins, we're here because of our, uh, because of our law breaking and because of our evil. He says, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. So we see a cross here of, of repentance. This dying thief, he looked to the one and he saw who he was. He saw Jesus, the Lamb of God. I believe his eyes of faith were open. And he's seen himself in his condition as a lost person. I'll tell you something, friend. People will never get saved unless they see themselves as lost. Now, I didn't just evolve into... I know a famous 
a famous preacher that it was said of his wife when, when asked her when did she get saved. And you know what she said? She said, well, it's just something that, that happened over time. I'm telling you, friends, salvation is one time in your life when you realize you're a sinner and you call on Jesus as your, for your Savior and He saves you right then. It's not a process of building something up. It's a process of looking to the Lamb of God for salvation. This bunch that goes around saying, well, if you do good enough, then you'll, you'll make it in, and if you don't good enough, you won't. I'll tell you, if you do good enough, you'll die and go to hell, except you accept the Lamb of God as your sacrifice. Except you be as this man on the right was, unless you be as that man that, that, was, that was on the cross of repentance, you too will die and go to hell without God. Remember that cross in the middle is a cross, hallelujah, of redemption. He saw who he was. He saw the sinner that he was. He saw the Savior for who he was. And he knew the all, his only hope was to call out to him. Listen, he saw, he realized he was a sinner. And the listen, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he met that requirement. When he, when he realized that he was a sinner. He said, we're here because we deserve it. We're sinners. We're but he also saw the, the, one, the, the cross in the middle, the redemptive cross. He also saw that as one that was perfect and able to pay his sin debt. He saw Jesus for who he was, and he cried out to him, Will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? He's confessing, he's repenting, and he's asking for salvation when he says, Will you remember me when you come into thy kingdom? Listen, this man had no time. This, had, this man had no time to come from that cross and, and let his feet do some work. He had no time, although he had, he had the, the use of his hands, but they were nailed to a cross. He had no time to come from that cross and do something with his hands to win his salvation. He had no, no time for his body to be taken off of that cross and in his dying hour be baptized. But that's not part of salvation. Neither is works part of salvation. He had no time to do anything but the few moments or the few hours that he had left to live. Friend, he, listen, he died well. Amen. He died well because he had the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart. He cried out to him as that cross of reception, that cross of repentance that he hung on as he, as he received Jesus. He had no time for good works. That couldn't save him anyway. He had no time to live right. That wouldn't help him anyway. But the last few minutes of his life, friend, he died a saved man because he re realized who Jesus was. He realized who he was. And he called out to Jesus and said, Believe me, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And did God say, did Jesus say, Well, you've not done a thing for me. You've not witnessed for me. All you've ever done is blaspheme me. All you've ever done is been a thief and a robber. All you've ever done is, is go against everything that I've taught you while you was here. And, and I'm not going to accept you. No, Jesus looked at the sinner because he knew that he loved him and he looked at the sinner and he said, he said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, my friend, that knocks holes in everybody's theory that you got to work for salvation or you got to be baptized. This thief couldn't do none of them, but he couldn't cry out to Jesus, and he did, and Jesus saved him. So we see here a cross of redemption in the Lord Jesus Christ. We see a cross of rejection in the thief on the left, and we see a cross of reception or repentance in that, in that thief on the right hand of God. Let me ask you something today. Have you ever cried out for mercy? Have you ever cried out for help from God? Do you know Him? Are you on that cross? Now, preacher, I've never been on a cross. We should have been. We should have been. It. We should have died for our own sins and in our own sins. But Jesus loved me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That thief on the right-hand side, that male factor on the right-hand side, he probably never heard those words, but he saw the exempt, the, he saw 
by example what those words meant. And he trusted Jesus. Have you trusted him? Have you looked to him for salvation? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. God, I'm glad that the plan of salvation is so clear and so plain. God, we're so glad that one day you reached down by your grace and you saved us. Lord, you pulled us out of a, a horrible pit, a miry pit. God, you, you, you set us on a solid rock. You established our goings. God, all because that we accepted, Father, your redemptive plan. Father, we pray right now, God, that you'd help us, Lord. Many folks here know you and are saved. And I pray, God, we get a fresh glimpse of salvation's plan. God, be able to go out into this world that we'll soon be going to leave from. We'll tell the lost, Father, how they too can be saved and how that you died for their sins to pay the sin debt of many. Lord, if there's someone here to the lost today, God, would you please touch them, God, with, Lord, dear Jesus, touch them, Lord, with conviction. Father, that they might come to you and be converted before it's too late and they go to hell without you for eternity. Bless now the remainder of the service in Jesus' name. Amen.